All right, tonight, guys, we're going to just talk about some random stuff. I have a few things I want to talk about. I'm not sure how I'm going to title the video, so you guys will see it when I just figure out what I'm going to do. But I want to start off by saying big thanks to my friend Homer for gifting me and sending over a new watch case box here. It has a, a drawer on the bottom. Uh, I could probably put some straps and stuff down here. I don't have, a, like, extra rings or anything like that, but there's slots for that. And, of course, you have the, the top part here, which will hold 12 watches. And um, I'm surrounded by people, including myself in the past, especially that were constant flippers and everything like that. Um, I started to get to the point where it's selling is more trouble than it's worth. So this is going to come in handy. I already have a really nice 10 case. So adding a 12 one, uh, a 12 slotted watch case, watch box to the um, channel here is going to be very helpful because there's... There's literally watches just sitting all over the place. So, thanks, Homer. I appreciate that. So, um, now that that's out of the way, I got an email today. We're going to do a couple things. We're going to talk, if I can control the glare, we're going to talk about a couple things here. First off, I got an, I got an email from Shinola. And they introduced, and I've seen um, leaked pictures of this before. This is called the Vinton, or I guess that's Vinton. Um, but it's a totally different case design, you know, that we're typically used to their wire lug design. But you can see, uh, we're going to look at some better pictures here soon. But one of their main selling features of it is it has an engraved watch uh, case back, um, which is very cool. But, and I know there's, you know, Shinola haters and whatever, I don't. I don't really care. I'm over it. But there, these, this is a 38 millimeter watch, and I believe the case thickness is really thin. So I think being 38, I think they're ultimately, and you can look at their colorways here, they're ultimately kind of marketing it towards the um, the women, especially from a brand that you know their Runwell series. They have one that's a 47 millimeter. So um, that's basically how they work. But I'll wear a 38 millimeter watch all day long, and I think most of you guys will too. So, and if you look, of course, my wife was kind of showing me the pink one, so that one was uh, really cool too. Um, which I will bring that up and show you, but I think it's a great looking watch. Um, and I like it, you know, that now you have fitted end links, you have the twisted um, lugs there, so that's very like, very much like Omega that I'm a huge fan of. The other thing is, Typically, this is the first time, you can see how thin it is there, but that's a fold-over clasp. Typically, Shinola does butterfly clasp, which I'm not a fan of. So I think that's really cool, um, and overall it's a good design. And at some point, when these start to show up at the outlet center, you know, when they're 550 here, when they show up in the outlet center, they're going to be like 2 250 and stuff like that. I might pick one up then. Um, I'm definitely not going to go spend 550 on it, but... I'm interested to see one in hand, that's for sure. So I think it's a great looking watch, and I think it's a, it's a refreshing design. So the the pink one, I will show you this, they actually did the date wheel is color matched to the dial, which is a nice tension to detail. So that's really cool for, say you want to get your wife or your mom or something. Um, I think it's a pretty nice watch, and it's quartz, which a lot of women like because or people at least think they do, maybe they do or don't. Um, I think it's a really good gift watch, especially, like I said, once they get come down to the outlet level. But um, I think the other thing with Shinola we can talk about real quick is, I think it'll be in the coming soon section. They are doing, yeah, there it is. They're doing a, a automatic run well. So their run well series, I'm, I don't know, I'm assuming it'll be in both sizes, the 47 and the 41 millimeter. Uh, with the wire lugs, which I think is a great case. They're going to be doing an automatic movement in there. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a, a new Ronda automatic movement that they worked with and developed and stuff. I could be wrong on that. Don't quote me on that. Um, you know, with their dive watch, they've used a couple of different movements. So we'll see. It might be a Salida. It might be a, a Ronda or whatever like that. So pretty cool news anyway for the people that like Shinola or something different. Um, I know there's mostly in our world of things of you know watch fans um, most people don't like them but I do so I'm going to share with uh, the info on there okay so enough about that I want to have a little bit of fun now 
because I've been interacting with uh, people in the comments more and more. So I'm just going to show you real quick um, some comments that I've been getting. Some some people are haters and some people are totally, for the most part, most people that comment on my videos are actually very um, polite and you know interactive at a, in a positive manner. But occasionally I get some um, interesting comments. We'll say like this guy here, his comments are way too long, but um, this Malik Martin, he was making some comments about um, basically what a true collector is, like which style of watches you should have. And basically the watches that I have doesn't warrant me the title of a collection or something. So, I mean, I did some uh, rea uh, comments back to him and stuff like that. F go look it up. It's in the State of the Collection video 2018 if you want to see some entertaining banter back and forth. But... Um, let's see, you know, there's some comments there on the, uh, the Hamilton Pioneer video. That's a super cool watch. I sent that off to Bruce. There's going to be some sweet video that I'm sure that he'll make of that. So some comments on my knife videos. I know my knife video doesn't get a ton of views, but there are, you know, a ton of knife fans out there. And I am, I haven't made another knife video because like, I'm super impressed with this dragonfly and I have to be really into when it comes to a knife, I have to really be into it for, for me to do the video. So, um, comments on like the root beer mod watch, um, you know, um, Kyle Stewart actually asked if, um, what can, what are the expected cost of a build like this? Um, and now I talked to, uh, Scott that actually built that watch and you can expect to spend close to about a thousand dollars and depending on how you spec that watch out that thousand dollars can easily be turned into fifteen hundred dollars so modding watches at certain levels um becomes expensive quick so that's partly why i would i want to help or you know attempt to do one viewer mod watch a month because basically you're not going to pay any labor and if I can work with some of these mod supply companies um, hopefully I can get them on a program where they're sponsoring a build each month so there's a potential that we could get the parts for free on the mod and then maybe we just have to buy a dial or something if you want to do something like that or hands um, so I, I'm not there yet I'm working on it so hopefully that'll come to fruition but um, in the meantime, I'll, I'm going to still move forward with it, and you know the viewer is just going to have to buy the parts. Um, so I go always a step ahead. Um, I get Kyle commented here again. Now that he has the Ocean Rover, um, he kind of just dismisses Steinhardt and Squally. To a certain extent, I agree with you. the The Genoa Ocean Rover is a really good watch. It's just for a lot of people, it's more money than what they would want to spend on a homage watch. So that's where the Steinhardt and the Squally really um, capture that audience when they're they're hovering around closer to that $500 mark instead of, say, the twelve dollars or $1,300 mark. Honestly, I haven't even looked at Genoa in a while. I'll probably jump on their website here soon, maybe even reach out to them and see if they want to um, send in some more watches or something. Let's see. Uh, uh, Nazir? Uh, uh, sorry if I get your name wrong. Uh, he wrote, Hi, Rob, could you please honest honestly make a video review of the 6R15 because um, there's some other biased reviews out there and he even name drops a uh, um, guy over at uh, Just Bluefish. Um, you know, I, I talk to Guy all the time and for the most part, I kind of uh, agree with some of the complaints, I guess, with the Seiko movements. Um, you know, I have a, a decent time grapher, and I've even messed with trying to calibrate, actually, with Guy's advice from his uh, videos showing how to adjust things, you know, the beat error and the the timekeeping and everything of it. And I've had varying results with uh, time grapher readouts on the Seiko movements, and that's the 7S26, the 4R um, for our movements, the NH35s, the NH36s, all of them. I've tried them all. And the 6R15s, um, and there's different iterations of that as well. But I have to say, like my Jade Monster, that thing runs at like almost zero, maybe plus one. Um, but then you like throw my original Orange Monster on the Time Grapher, and that thing is whack. 
Um, you throw my SKX on there with a 7S26, and it actually performs, um, you know, within specification, plus 25 minus, or what is it, plus 10 minus 25, something like that. Um, but what, and, the, and they'll have varying beat errors and, and uh, sporadic uh, readouts on the time grapher. But what I found is if you get a good, clean, full wind on most um, Seiko 7S 4R 6R movements and wear it on wrist where it's actually getting some of your body temperature and everything like that and you have um, you know random movements that are winding it still um, overall I've had actually really good performance out of most of my Seiko watches it's rare that I have one that's really wacky um, I'll say the worst one I have right now currently is my Orange Monster it does run consistently slow probably close to 30 seconds slow a day or more so um, but I'm fine with that. I'm not going to mess with it. I, I rotate through watches so quickly that I'm a little more forgiving of, um, some of those issues. So, but I, I'll do some more. I will do that, uh, video. I, I replied to you and I will do that. We'll play around with some time grapher. Um, we'll do the, the 7S, the 4Rs, and I'll show you some of my best performers and my worst performers and my thoughts on, um, don't put too much emphasis on, what it reads on the time graph or go from, in my experience, real world wear of a watch. So, and I think you guys that wear watches for an extended period of time will kind of back me up on that. You'll, you'll see that it overall performs pretty well. Uh, let's see. Crystal Times has different shapes. Okay. So John Irwin, um, I commented or I replied to you as well. Crystal Times cases have different shaped lugs. Can't use strap code or Seiko bracelets with fitted end links. Um, I hope that's not accurate information. I do have that new uh, SKX, you know, made by them in route. I already have the shipping tracking information, so hopefully I'll see that pretty soon. And I have a ton of different bracelets. I have um, solid end links, uh, hollow end links, and different brands and stuff like that. And I, I will do a full, it'll probably be way too long video of just looking at the case, even in its hollow form, before I begin a build on it. Um, as long as everything looks good, I intend to do a full build on it. I'm going to source all parts um, from independent suppliers. I'm not going to do, um, you know, I take that back. There probably would be one Seiko factory Seiko part that was like attached to like a regular watch and that's the SARB059 um, stem and crown because I just, I like that to be fitted. I don't like to fit stems and crowns. Um, because I, I'll definitely be putting a, like an NH36 in there, or if I can find the right dial, I might even do a, a 6R in there, but we'll see how that goes. Um, let's see. Frazier uh, commented on the orientation of the hour disc on that um, Veloci watch. So, yeah, that one can be a, a weird one to get used to wearing. I don't, it's more of a fun watch. I don't, I don't think I would wear that on a regular basis. Uh, let's see. There's Nazar again. I get a regular. I get a lot of regular commenters. I see that. Um, oh, heh. I I see. Um, I don't know how to say your name. Panna Granite. Panna. We'll just call you Panna. Uh, playing with tritium at home. Tritium is a radioactive gas and could be toxic if inhaled. Um, I have I have a lot of other items in my home with tritium in them or on them applied. There's we're as. Uh, People in general public, we are exposed to much higher levels of uh, radiation than what those tritium tubes are, and those are uh, captured, um, so there should be no... Actually, um, I actually have access to a Geiger counter. I could play around and show you guys, except for I don't think I have a tritium watch. Next time I get a tritium watch in, I will see if I can bring the Geiger counter home, and I will show you that there's basically no radiation on it. So it's not a concern of mine. I'm exposed to way more harmful things than tritium tubes <laughs> in a uh, in a watch. I'm not worried about it. That is not what's going to kill me, I think. Uh, Limited all fact, the BB-32, okay, so that's a comment on the Black Bay 41. Hand lengths, uh, the 41 versus the 36, they were like the same hands and stuff, which can be a fail. I've seen other companies do that too, where they don't change the hand size. That's... Partly why I don't like the original, the earlier Rolex Explorers um, when they switched over to the the more recent model where it has the loomed 
um, numbers instead of the white gold numbers. They actually put the bigger hands on it. I actually like that model. Um, so we'll see. Hopefully Rolex does some cool things with that. I would consider purchasing that watch. But that's way out in the, out in the future. Um, let's see here. Oh, um, the next hobby uh, post up a link. So if you're interested, where was that? At? That was also in the Veloci um, video. He, uh, if you look at his, if you guys are interested in that, um, I don't know where I put it, the uh, Snoopy Timex, um, this guy, I paid like 140 for it, but he, he put up a link to Urban Outfitters. I think it's like 90 bucks. So good find on the next hobby there. We're looking out for the rest of us. Um, I don't know how long they'll last, but if you guys are looking for one of these Timex Snoopy ones, go to the uh, urbanoutfitters.com shop and uh, you can pick one of these guys up for 90 bucks. I think that's a good deal. All right, let's try to find some old, maybe older ones. Um, Steven, he comments all the time. Always good to hear from you, Steven. I get a lot of guys. Uh, that's Chris at the Watch Lounge. He, he comments a lot. Um, Aaron, my buddy Aaron over at the Dunlop uh, OFD channel, he does a lot of great videos. Uh, Jad K says, I sound like uh, Maverick's Ma Maverick Watch Review's twin brother. Thanks, Jad. appreciate that. <laughs> uh, let's see. It's not Divers Watch. Oh, all right, here we go. Uh, oh, this is that Malika guy again that uh, likes to give me crap about things. Uh, or devil's advocate or whatever you want to call it i can take it i don't really care sometimes i have time to comment back sometimes i don't and depends on what mood you can you know catch me and typically i'll try to reply to more positive commenters but occasionally i like to kick in a little bit of passive aggressive when they're um a little the comments are a little weird or i, I feel a little jerky so if you catch me in the right mood i'll um i'll tend to express myself a little bit uh, let's see yeah for sure swiss 88 Please be 40 millimeter or under. Man, if Alpina would do, that's one of the watches around here. I can never figure out which one it is, and it beeps on the hour every hour. I had to store it down here because it was waking up people at night upstairs. But, um, yeah, if they would do that watch at, like, 40 millimeter, I think that would be an insane bargain. Um, let's see. I don't want to bore you guys too much here with it, but it is fun to read through the comments. And I, seriously, guys, I really do look through the comments. And I, and sometimes people will post up even on older videos, you know, with hopes of me seeing it. Um, it I do see them. Sometimes I, I have time to comment back. Sometimes I don't. Um, I, I try to interact because I, I, I want to keep that small channel feel. And I think that's the only way I can really keep that and keep the uh, involvement with all of us working together so as the channel grows which it seems like it's grown fairly steady as it grows um you know it will become more difficult but i'm still committed to doing it at some level maybe at some point i will recruit help um but that would have to be quite a lot of growth before i could get to that level so anyway guys i went way too long this thing's almost 20 minutes long if you watch this long that is crazy but i have a lot of good videos coming up and i appreciate you guys sticking around